Hi guys. So today we're in Grave Cemetery and hope to find the graves of John Barry, Michael Barry and William Barry who are buried in this cemetery but so far I haven't been lucky enough to find them. But as you can see Private John Barry was a Royal Dublin Fusilier killed in the Balkans 7th December 1915 aged 27. Private Michael Barry, Welsh Regiment killed in action in France 23rd of July 1918 aged 28 and Private William Barry, Royal Irish Regiment wounded in France 23rd of March 1918 and died 19th of July 1927 aged just 31. So we'll have a look and we'll read a few more headstones along the way. And as you can see, Grange is full of very old graves, tombs. So I'm not sure how lucky we'll be, but so far I haven't been able to locate them. But it would be really nice to be able to find them. But we'll have a look at a few along the way anyway. And here we have James Keating, who died October, aged 50, in 1895. And his son, who died November the 1st, 1896, aged just nine. We have Patrick Keating here who died January the 7th, 1941, aged 64. Also his three children, Patrick, Margaret and William, who died young. His wife, Margaret, who died in 1964, aged 83, and his sister, Ellen, who died September 1969, aged 84. So with cemeteries like this, and you can see the ruins of a church in the background. It's always hard to know where to start. And this is Katrin Parl, who departed this life March 27th, 1836, aged 21. And that's an amazing condition. And we have, I think it's Nicholas Moran and Joseph Moran who departed his life 1854, aged 85. And there's Mary Moran, 1856, and Nicholas is there at the bottom. I think that's 1870. We have an 1836 here, erected by Walter, and in memory of his daughter Elizabeth, and she was just 20. And I see 1879 and 1934 here, and then 1892, and these are winters. Look at that one. We see loads of these crosses here in Grange. I think I see 1792 there, age 74. 
Rossiter, Richard Rossiter. And 1800s there. Nineteen oh eight, just there, and that's Anastasia Rossiter. And you can just see there, look at that the window, or what was a window. And we have Richard Rochford, who departed this life in 1798, aged 56, Lord of Mercy on a soul, also his wife, Eleanor Rochford, alias Cardiff, who departed this life the 8th of April, 1783, aged 39. And there's another catch, and I think there as well, and that might be 1886. And just this one caught my eye as I was walking by. And there's Patrick Duggan, 1921, and his wife Catherine, 1938, their children John, 1962, his daughter Annie, 1962. And so far, no look finding the berries and I wonder now will we at all because there's so many here and some you just can't possibly read but look at that for a railing and in their day these would have been magnificent structures so we keep going and hopefully come across Berries. We have a 1928 there, James White and his wife Margaret, 1917. You see the, the ground is extremely dry. I'd imagine it was maybe somebody put weed killer down and with the heat this last two days it's just totally dried off and died. There's Elizabeth. Elizabeth died 1959, aged 80. And if you watched any of the my earlier videos, you might remember it was full of the name Boxwell. And we have more Boxwells here. This is in 1838. Samuel Boxwell, aged 15. There's an 1859, Susanna Boxwell. And then the rest is 
too hard to read. And if we take a look at that around the voxels and I know the sun is beautiful but it's a bit of a hindrance today it's shining in the lens look at this oh it's open and here here we have more box wells and thistles of course so we have an box well 1843 oh look zoom in a bit age just three months and of Nessie Boxwell 1847 age just 10 months and is that Ambrose Boxwell who died 1874 age 34 and Dr John Boxwell who died at Barry's Reef Australia so anyone looking from Australia Barry died or sorry John died at Barry's Reef in 1876 age 31 Samuel Boxwell, late Major Northumberland Fusiliers, who died at Bala, Ballarat, Australia, March 1904, aged 54, loving memories of their father, Henry Harvey Boxwell. Um, MDFRCSI, surgeon of the County Wexford Infirmary, who died September the 1st, 1889, aged 79. And of Kate Boxwell, who died December 1912, aged 97. And this is William, who departed life in 1886, aged 64. And Elizabeth, widow of William. And I can't make out the date there. She had done what she could. So that's the Boxwells and Troughton, I think it says. So we'll come back out. You can hear it, a cow there in the background. And we come in here. Let's see how this is. Sullivan, who departed this life on the 6th of October 1860, age 72. Also her brother, William, who died at the same place on the day of her funeral. October the 10th, 1860, age 70. So I'm just reading again. So Florence died 1860. And also her brother, William, who died at the same place on the day of her funeral. October 1860. So Florence's brother William died at the same place on the day of her funeral. Wow, so her brother died the day Florence has been buried. And to see that wrote on the headstone is something else. I'm not sure if my phone picked it up. That's quite amazing. So I'll make my way back out along again and we shall continue to look for the Barry brothers but as I go around it's looking less likely that we'll find them and I have looked online and I have searched here before
and I could be exposed that it's just one of these white crosses. We have Richard Hayes here, 1903, and his parents, Walter Hayes, Catherine Hayes, and their son, James and son Patrick. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of graves. But I'm no near finding who I want to find. 1959 Another tomb And this date caught my eye, 1795 John McBride and his wife Mary. John died in 1927 and Mary, his wife, died in 1938. Their sons John died in 1930, Patrick died in 1931, and James died in 1943. William died 1951. And just look at the ages 23, 20, 34, and 38. Very, very young. We have the three black crosses. We have Mary Doyle Nee Power, who died in 1936, her husband Thomas Tommy, 1969, their children James and Anastasia, and their granddaughter Elizabeth, who died in infancy, their daughter Kitty, died the 3rd of June 2018, aged 93. John Murphy, 1926, and Annie Murphy, 1946, age 77. And this is Mary Hoare, 1954. It's almost desert-like conditions here in places. Elizabeth Cork, I believe it is, 1921, and her son Bernard. Kilmore Key in Dublin, February 1991, aged 73. So I've made my way up to this grave. I see in 1864. But not much else. But look at that. Can you imagine how grand that would have stood all those years ago? Gate into it. And we have more writing here. I see in 
1872, age 53, and it's Margaret. And we've more writing here, but it's... No way could I read it. And 18, 18 down at the very bottom there, George Harper. Oh, move another one here, and you all know I love these ones. But unfortunately, this one is completely broke. Half. I don't know if you can hear in the distance the church bells. And there's all these crosses, so I'm starting to wonder. The berries are there somewhere. I've looked online, I've found some photos that I've put up, but no information on whereabouts they're buried, only that they are here in Grange. And Joseph Bates here, and Joseph died May 1923, age 27, and his mother Catherine Bates. Died in 1941, aged 71, and his father Martin, who died in 1942. And we have another, another grave that's completely broke. But I do see a Nicholas there, and an 1830. more of these little crosses at this stage it's hard to know where grave starts or where the end and maybe there's a significance to all those stones there the little statue of Mary is broken that one Tierney, Joanna Tierney, 1914. A loving memory of Alice McGrath, 1931, age just 18. Fresh flowers here. Of Richard, the memory of Richard Devrix. That's beautiful. So Richard is certainly not forgotten by his family. And tombs. It just seems to keep going and going. Mary 
Hagen, 1968. 1945 there. To the memory of Patrick and Nicholas Kelly, Newtown Kilmore, killed at the Battle of New Ross, the 5th of June 1798. So there's your 1798 rebellion. And also to those from the district who fought gallantly for the freedom of Ireland. And we have an Irish inscription there, but I'm not very good at Irish, so I'm not going to even give that a go. Kelly there, and that looks like 1792 and uh, 1951 underneath it, Patrick Kelly. And it's much warmer than normal here in Wexford, Ireland. But on that note, I'm going to go into the shade here inside the ruins of the church. And have a look at this. like a, a Richard Whitty, but it's certainly not English. Hmm. Stafford the... Uh, mm, I can't actually make out anything there. I'm not sure if it's French. It's just 1646 there. But quite the monument. And a tomb in there that I can't even hopefully. It's a very strange layout because I can't get in there. And there's an eighteen fourteen. And her husband, Peter Corish, I think it is. And there's what remains of the doorway. So we're going to go out here. And try and get into that other tomb where the, the rail is. John wrote there in 1940 and his wife Ellen 
1949. That's one of the walls of the church that remains. I'm going to zoom that. There's a window and it's blocked up. Nicholas, Nicholas Whitty here and we have 1790. Age 70, Alison, his wife. Um, 17, 15 possibly, age 49. And we have another. I think this is Nicola Devericks. Departed this life, 1839, age 41. Lord of mercy on her soul. Another old one here, 1720, sorry, 1795. Patrick Barry, part of his life. Ooh, too, too early for the Barry brothers that I'm looking for. A very old headstone engraved there. Let me see this one as well. And that's Cod, 1841 there. Look at this one. It's like it's, it's brand new, but it's Walter. I think it's Walter Walsh. Departed this life, May 25th, 1796, age 70. Lord of mercy on his soul, also the body of his wife, alias Cogley, but everything else is it's kind of sunken into the ground, but it's almost the rightness, really easy to read, and yet it's stuck right in here. That's quite amazing. I've just made my way around Ooh, to the back of the, the church, church ruins. You can see this fabulous window. I've actually no idea what that was. Okay, so on closer inspection, I see Grange Byer, B-I-E-R, so not sure of the pronunciation, made by Jim Moore. I think it says Recordstown, and it's 1939. And I believe that, if I can get it all into shot, that would have been used. For our coffins going across to the resting place, you can see there's a hook there. I'm trying to fit it all in, and I hope you can see.
see that now. But that's exactly what that would have been used for. To carry the coffins to the gravestone or the grave itself where the person was laid to rest. And that says 1929. And it's still here, which is quite remarkable. This is Robbie White, 1922, and his wife Margaret, 1945. What's her last place on this grave yard walk around is in here. And it's just across from that memorial. But I'm not sure why the railings would have been made like this, because you can't get out down there. I know it's hard to see with the sun. And we have a tomb here, but here lies the body. Uh, Parts of it are parts are but are quite readable, but I can't see a date nor a name. So unfortunately, we didn't find the Barry brothers, which is a real shame. But they are here somewhere, and we do remember them. And we thank them for their services. But on this beautiful day, Wednesday, I tell you all, stay safe. God bless. And I'll talk to you soon.